My first guest started writing his book at the age of 18 in what can only be described as a labour of love. He finally completed the work about 12 years later. The book is called Elvis and Ireland and explores the story of Elvis Presley and his social and musical influence on Irish culture. The book examines Elvis' story from the Irish perspective, focusing on how Ireland received Elvis originally, as well as highlighting the circumstantial links between Elvis and Ireland. This includes everything from Irish songs he sang, yeah, he did, a few, uh, Irish people he met, uh, what priests and politicians said about him here, the censorship of his movies. Didn't know that? Well, there was, there was. And all his Irish chart hits, interviews with well-known Irish people. Tomorrow and Saturday, the author is signing copies of this book at a location that has a significant Elvis link. Ivor Casey joins us now to tell us more. Uh, first of all, you're welcome onto the programme, Ivor. Nice to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me, there. Was, was that your favourite Elvis Presley song, I Just Can't Help Believing, or do you have a favourite uh, uh, song? It's way up there, all right. Yeah, yeah, he did some great songs around that period. Yeah. You've been working as a freelance journalist and photographer since you were 19, but you started this book at the age of 18. Where did your love for Elvis Presley come from? Uh, well, I suppose it all began on the 20th anniversary of Elvis' death back in 1997. Um, I was 13 at the time, and there was uh, th everything about Elvis was all over the TV stations in commemoration. And um, I was an impressionable 13 year old. I had no idea what the all this celebration was about, and I was just drawn in. I was uh, captivated by Elvis's, you know, his mag magnetism, his electricity as a performer because he was a fantastic stage performer. And I was just drawn to that, watching him on stage. He had such charisma. Tell us about the book. Um, the idea of the book came about at the age of 18 and you've been working on it for about 12 years. It was finally pub published there earlier this year. Um, the book has taken quite a number of years. Tell us about the research and the work that you undertook to write this book. To get it well, yeah. Up and um, out. Well, back in uh, back, it all started back in 2002. I was uh, heading for the leaving cert at the time. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I loved writing and I loved Elvis, so I thought I'd just put two to, the two together. Uh, but I had to come up with an original angle, and uh, I thought of like connecting everything Elvis had here, even though he'd never been to Ireland. His influence is huge around the world, so I wanted to kind of hone in on that and talk about the evolution of rock and roll. So I went I went around to the National Archives, National Library. I interview people of the time. I source and aside people who remember uh, the 1950s and remember how when Elvis came on the scene, how alien and unusual he was. So um, I, I, the book just starts off about um, how Elvis was actually not played here in Ireland in, in the 1950s on Radio Air, and it was they strictly didn't play rock and roll music. And uh, then I learned about how his, uh, the censor had uh, censored some of his movies very, very severely. Even one film was banned. The film King Creole was banned originally in Ireland in 1958. Was it because of a sex scene or sex connotations? I would imagine it certainly wasn't. Mm. It wasn't the violence because they let anything in on a violent uh, footing. No. But uh, anything to do with sex? Oh, but we left to plot that. Oh, censor that. That's that's true. Yeah, there was eight cuts, and most of them were sexual references. Some of them were even Elvis's gyrations. Um, some of the storyline uh, um, had Elvis like luring a girl to a hotel room, you know, for one thing only. Those kind of things were in the film, and the censor wanted them cut, but uh, the studio wouldn't cut them, so the film was banned for a few years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the studio decided to cut some of them, the scenes, and um, yeah, Ireland got it eventually. But it's funny to hear that a film that's so tame, as we see. It is so tame now. Is uh, was banned here originally. Now I know Phil Coulter wrote a song and Elvis sang it. Was it My Boy? Wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah. the book also explores musical influences on Irish culture. Uh, how um, Elvis and Irish culture? Besides Phil Coulter, what else is there in in the book that would have an Irish cultural connection? Well. Um, as the book focuses on the evolution of rock and roll music, you know, Elvis, uh, there was lots of rock and roll stars around Elvis's time. He's not the only one, but he uh, he's known and kind of accepted that he spearheaded the rock and roll revolution in the 50s. And... Um, he, uh, the show band started up shortly after that, so like Elvis's influence was enormous on the beginning of rock, on the birth of rock and roll in Ireland, because one of the earliest show bands was Brendan Boyer and the, the Royal Irish, and uh, he Brendan Boyer cites Elvis as being the main influence on his career, um, and many many other show band singers and performers like Dickie Rock, they they were highly influenced by by Elvis, uh, but then it moved on from you know the show bands, even though they're very important uh, to begin with, you had more raunchy 
few performers come along then, the kind of real down and dirty rock and roll stars like Phil Linnett and, and Rory Gallagher, who also uh, cited Elvis as being the major influence on their career. Mm. Did you speak to many people in Ireland who had connections with Elvis, maybe who had interviewed him or the band or whatever, or went over to the US? Because he never, he never actually did any outside of America tours because, well, because of um, C- Colonel Tom Parker and his, uh, his dubious citizenship. Yeah, that's well. He, he uh, Elvis, there was only one time Elvis was out of uh, America. He was able to do the. Uh, he had to go into the army. You know, he was drafted into oh, the yeah, army. Yeah, and, he dropped off at Preston Airport, wasn't it? That, that, yeah, Preston Airport in uh, Glasgow. Yeah. yeah, or outside Glasgow. Um, he uh, no, he never, like he, the closest he got to Ireland was flying above the Donegal Hills on his way back to a, mm. to America. Um, but uh, the people I, I interview were people um, who just remember Elvis. At the, who remember how Elvis was received here at the time um, unfortunately you know Elvis never did any interviews um, outside of America you know and he rarely gave many interviews anyway throughout his career um, but uh, I, I what I liked getting was the um, as I said, people like Eamon Campbell from the Dubliners I interviewed and um, Steve Wall of the Walls and uh, different performers who um, and, and, and artists and personalities who just have a memory of when Elvis came along and uh, people like Barry Devlin of Horse Lips and, you know, um, how much of an influence Elvis was on their careers. His middle name is Aaron. A lot of people thought it was Aaron and they thought there was an Irish connection. But is there any genetic Irish connection between himself and his antecedents? Well, there's um, there's been some reports there. You know, there's been reports for many years. Uh, I think um, almost every American star is linked to Ireland somehow. Um, his um, his name, though, is, what was interesting, what I found was that his name, El- the name Elvis itself, actually dates is, dates back to a, um, a bishop from Munster from uh, the year around the year uh, the year 500 A.D. And what was very interesting is that you think of Elvis as being, you know, this very, very far name, but it actually um, evolves from a name called Alva, um, which um, which was an Irish name originally. Interesting. Now, give me the connection again between Morris Colgan, and I hope he's in good form uh, over there in, in, in uh, where Swords, isn't it? Yeah. And, and the Elvis connection. There was something to do with um, himself and the 50s and Elvis Presley sending him a letter or something, wasn't there? That's right. In 1961, the story I got from Morris was that uh, his wife was unwell. They were living in England at the time, and uh, his wife was unwell at the time. And Morris, uh, like, uh, they were very young. They were big into Elvis. They both had a mutual interest. And um, Morris uh, wrote letters to uh, Elvis to like, explain the, search- the circumstances on which they were facing at the time because his wife was in hospital. And Elvis uh, wrote a letter to his wife and to Morris uh, you know, wishing her well and that hopefully everything would get better and so like Morris has those cherished uh, letters, you know, for, for 50 years and uh, like it's, it's amazing because Elvis never wrote too many ha- uh, letters as well but uh, these, are, these were directly handwritten from Elvis uh, for, and directly came from Graceland. Now you have a beautiful painting of Elvis on the cover of your book, tell us more. Uh, oh well, um, Nula Holloway's name. She's she's an artist, and um, I just uh, she's an artist. I decided to commission her to do a painting because uh, getting one of the reasons that the book took so long was because um, a lot of publishers were turning me down on the basis that I had no photographs of Elvis. I had none of my own photographs to use. So me sourcing and citing photographs is very difficult um, and a very costly uh, venture when you're going when you're doing something on your own. And uh, so I decided I would uh, utilize the the craft and the talents of an artist I knew so and, and there's other artwork in the book too by uh, people like Don Conroy and uh, Jackie Moore who also provided works and Barry Egan from the Sunday Independent described the book as an original book on the king it's important I would imagine having that sort of endorsement and even more so here Bono has endorsed the book as well yeah, oh yeah, I met Bono there earlier last year. Um, he told me how uh, he was delighted to be part of the book, and uh, we just had a few words there regarding Elvis, and uh, he posed for a photograph for me with the book. So uh, yeah, it's great to have the endorsement of somebody who is internationally respected and famous and well known and high up there in the music industry. Best of luck. I'm looking forward to glancing through it. Thanks very much indeed, Ivor, for coming on and letting us know about your book. 
Thank you very much, Dara. Ivor will be signing copies of his book, as he said, at JC's Supermarket in Swords tomorrow and Saturday. For more information and to buy the book, yeah, he wants you to buy it, uh, check out the website Ivor, that's it, Ivor Casey, Ivor Casey, blogspot.ie. It's also available on Amazon and uh, Tower Records in Dublin.